Okay, so today we will uh, follow okay, the lecture, lecture number six, carbonyl compounds and infrared spectroscopy revision. Okay, so we will just start straight away. Now, when we look into this uh, carbonyl compound, okay, you need to remember we are talking about aldehyde and ketone. Okay, so aldehyde and ketone, what is the difference? Okay, generally, if it is ending with uh, CHO, okay, that is going to be aldehyde. And if you have R1, then CO, another R2, then that's, uh, that is going to be your ketone. Okay, so like for example, if it is ending like this, CHO, this is going to be aldehyde. And you can see here, CO, and then there is one R and another R over there. So this is going to be ketone. So if I want to name this, quite simple, okay, how many carbons? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so this is hexane now. And if I want to name uh, for this, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. So octane, okay, octane. And then the oxygen is at carbon number one, number two. Okay, so it's going to be two on. Okay, so you need to be careful with that, okay, the naming part. And then drawing the displayed formula, okay, let's say, for example, you want to draw for methanol, okay, one carbon, so this is going to be H, okay, do remember, for aldehyde, you can have the one of the R to become the H, so this is methanol. And if I want to draw for propanol, okay, three carbon, so double bond O, H, this is going to be propanol, you fill up all. And pentan three on, Okay, pentan is five, okay, and then three on, so number one, number two, number three, so this is going to be uh, over there. And then draw the skeletal formula for the compounds listed in part A, okay. Uh, maybe I will uh, just show you only for this one, okay, this one you can do it yourself. Okay, but let's say I want to show the skeletal formula, how to draw the skeletal formula for this compound, for, uh, pentan three on. So, there are five carbon over them, okay, carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number four, carbon number five, okay, you draw, okay, it's supposed to be like this, and then at carbon number three, okay, it's going to be double bond O, so I just put like this, okay, this is going to be the skeletal formula, so you can plan, okay, you can just uh, learn how to do, uh, do that, okay, but I will straight away go into the preparation of aldehyde. Now, do take note, the preparation of aldehyde is just a repetition of what we have done uh, until now. So how do we prepare aldehyde? Okay, you need to remember, okay, it all starts in alcohol, okay? So primary alcohol, okay, we can oxidize primary alcohol to become aldehyde. And after that, I can further oxidize to become carboxylic acid. This one we have learned before. Secondary alcohol, okay, we can oxidize straight, become ketone. Ketone cannot be oxidized further. Tertiary alcohol cannot be oxidized, okay, cannot be oxidized. Using this information, okay, we are going to just look into preparation of aldehyde. So from primary alcohol, how do I get aldehyde? So please take note, they do not want to change or we want to prevent the formation of carboxylic acid. So how do you make sure that carboxylic acid is not being formed over here? So you need to take some precaution. Say uh, you are going to oxidize, you are going to use the same oxidizing agent, you are going to heat them under reflux, no change in that. Okay, but what we do, we take some precaution. Okay, maybe we heat them gently, heat them gently. Okay, and then we are going to add the oxidizing agent, okay, the oxidizing agent that we use, similar, potassium manganate acidified, potassium dichromate acidified, but you add them one drop at a time, okay, drop by drop. And another precaution we take is, we don't need to wait, we just distill them off, okay, as it is formed, okay, so this will prevent the formation of carboxylic acid, so you collect them immediately. Okay, so there are three things that we need to do. Okay, heat gently. Okay, still reflux. Okay, heat gently, add drop by drop. Okay, what do you add drop by drop? The oxidizing agent and you distill immediately. Okay, distill immediately. So these are the things that you need to 
uh, take note when it comes to formation of aldehyde. Why we do this? We do not want the aldehyde to be converted into carboxylic acid. So we need to take this precaution. But obviously, when we look into observation, the observation is still going to be the same. Okay, so maybe I'll ask some, uh, some of you. Potassium manganate, SCD5 potassium manganate, SCD5 potassium dichromate. What is going to be the color change if it is a positive uh, reaction? For even, can you tell us what is going to be the color change? Uh, purple to colorless. Yeah, good. Purple to colorless. And then how about potassium dichromate? Orange to green. Yes, remember. Okay, orange okay, to green. Okay, green is a nature color. You can memorize this. Okay, so this is very important. Okay, let's move on okay, to the next part. Now, if you are preparing aldehyde, okay, very easy. Ketone, no problem. Okay, because ketone cannot be further oxidized. So you don't bother about heating them gently, adding drop by drop or distill immediately. You do not need to worry about that. Use the same oxidizing agent that you want to use. Heat them under reflux. No need to worry, you have to hit them gently, add drop by drop, collect them immediately. No need to worry about all that. Okay, so the observation is still going to be the same, but you need to use okay, secondary alcohol. Okay, this is important. If you want aldehyde, you must use primary alcohol. Okay, so ketone, secondary alcohol. Okay, please remember that. So that is preparation. So now we have our carbonyl compound ready. Ketone, aldehyde, they are ready. Okay, so let's actually look into uh, the reaction. But before we go into the reaction, maybe we just write some equations involving them. So you see, uh, write a balance equation for the oxidation of ethanol to ethanol. I will always suggest students to draw the display formula if you cannot visualize. So this is going to be ethanol. Okay, I just put ethanol. Uh, and then, okay, if you don't want to put the OH over there, also can. Okay, I just put the OH over there. And I want to oxidize them. Okay, I want to oxidize them. So how do I write this equation down? Okay, very easy. Okay, you just need to put the O. Okay, here you see hydrogen, hydrogen. First, you put the O, one O over here. Okay, next what will happen? This OH and this one will go up. Okay, so they will give you c c double bond o okay and then h you are already getting the aldehyde okay it means how many o that i added just now i only add one so it means you just write one and it will give you this uh sorry they just need one and then they will give you the ch3 c double bond o h and then one molecule of water. So if I want to write it down properly, I will suggest to write it down CH3, okay, C, and then just now it's going to be alcohol, right? So it's going to be CH2OH plus one molecule, uh, one atom of oxygen, and they will give you CH3, C, don't write OH, eh? this is common mistake from students, okay? This one should be aldehyde, so it should be H, O and then plus H2O. Done. Okay, this is how you write the equation. So if you want to write the oxidation uh, from butan to all to butan not sim similar. Okay, so you have butan to all, okay, carbon number two, OH. So I want butan non, okay, same. If I want to put this, how do I represent this? Okay, I will put, okay, this one was H just now. I put the O here, okay, one O, and then this OH will disappear together with the hydrogen over there. Okay, so you are going to get water, leaving behind, okay, uh, CH3, C double bond O, and then C2H5, okay. So if I want to write it down, okay, it's supposed to be CH3, C, uh, COH, CHOH, CH2, CH3 plus O, they will give you H2O plus CH3, CO. Okay, if you want to write fully, also can CH2, CH3 or C2H5 also can. Okay, but this is going to be how you solve this. Okay, so this one you need to practice. Okay, whenever you want to write the equation, let's say for example, now I'm just stopping at 
aldehyde. Okay, let's say if I want to continue this, okay, with uh, to give you alcohol, uh, carboxylic acid. So how? Okay, quite simple. Just add another O over there. So in total, you might actually require two O over there to give you CH three COOH. Okay, plus H two O. Simple as that. Okay, if you want to continue, okay, to give you carboxylic acid. Okay, so you learn how to get this done. Okay, but I will just move on. Okay, now I taught you about how do you get aldehyde, how do you get ketone. Okay, but now we have to go into reaction. Now this one is still reaction is when it comes to uh, formation. Yeah, because we know that okay, primary alcohol will form aldehyde, will be further oxidized to become carboxylic acid. Okay, and if that thing is happening, okay. Of course, you can make the reaction to be reversed. It means the oxidation, you go to the right. Okay, so we can also make carboxylic acid to become aldehyde. We can also change aldehyde to become primary alcohol. We can also change carboxylic acid to become uh, directly primary alcohol also. Okay, the same applies over here. So that is what we call as reduction. Okay, but what you need to take note over here is going to be, you need to be careful. Okay, aldehyde, okay, aldehyde can be reduced to become primary alcohol. Okay, ketone can be reduced to become secondary alcohol. Uh, now, you also need to know carboxylic acid can be also reduced to become primary alcohol. So what you need to know is you need to know what type of reducing agent that you can use. Okay, if you look at this particular chapter, they say that you can use NaBH4, and you can also use uh, the NaBH4 is done um, in alkaline condition. Okay, and you need to warm them. You can also use okay LiAlH4 in dry ether and since LiAlH4 is very very reactive you do not need to uh, heat them okay it's going to be at room temperature okay now i have taught you this when i was teaching you about carboxylic acid because okay if you look at this uh, situation primary alcohol change into aldehyde then aldehyde change into carboxylic acid Okay, if you just want to jump from here, one step to here, to here, it's okay. You can use NaBH4. Okay, it's a mild reducing agent. Okay, NaBH4, you warm them. Okay, alkaline and you warm them. But if you want to skip from carboxylic acid, you want to stay away from a primary alcohol. You require a strong reducing agent you cannot use nabh4 over here to change carboxylic acid to become primary alcohol a lot of students do not know this okay please take note it must be dry ether why is dry ether because i don't want it to react with water so they are very reactive so anything that is very reactive you do not need to heat them up it is done at room temperature so this is something that will help you to remember okay but you can also use okay l i a l h for if you want to change carbos uh, uh if you want sorry if you have aldehyde and you want to change it to primary alcohol no problem okay it will not bypass anything but no harm in using l i a l h for a strong one doesn't uh, no, don't have any problem but okay if you want to change carboxylic acid to aldehyde alone i will suggest to use nabh4 don't go and use liAlh4 okay so this one i hope you can understand when to use them okay so we have two types and one is very very strong so you need to choose which one you want to use but when it comes to ketone no problem okay ketone secondary alcohol to become ketone so it doesn't matter from ketone you want to form secondary alcohol you can use any you can use nabh4 alkaline warm or you can use lial h4 in dry ether now the next part is going to be writing equations very simple also so if i have ethanol like for example i show you ethanol ch3 c double bond oh so Similar like just now, okay, if you oxidize, you put O, now I'm going to put hydrogen. So what happened, okay, so uh, you just need to put the hydrogen 
uh, first, okay, you want to break the double bond, okay, so you break the double bond, you put the hydrogen here, okay, you put the hydrogen there, and you after you break, each carbon must have four bonds, you put another hydrogen over there, and it becomes alcohol, okay, so you can see ethanol is being formed, so how many hydrogen that I use, I use two, so that's the reason why it is two, okay, you use the same method, okay, to do it for Propanone as well. I'll just give you, uh, I'll show you CH3, C double bond O, CH3. So what I need to do, okay, first I put the hydrogen here. The double bond is broken. So I put another hydrogen over there. So now I am going to have a secondary alcohol. So how many hydrogen I use? I use two, okay? And then you can just draw this, no problem at all, okay? So this one is going to be when it comes to reduction. Now, that is solved, okay? Now, the actual reaction when it comes to aldehyde and ketone is when they are reacting with HCN, not KCN, okay? KCN is used for the reaction of uh, alcohol, okay, with KCN under ethanolic condition, Okay, and then you hit them under reflux. Okay, that is different. But in al uh, aldehyde and ketone, under carbonyl compound, HCN is prepared in C2. Okay, what is in C2? In the same reaction vessel. So we use NACN or KCN. Okay, NACN or KCN with, remember, dilute. Okay, we dilute H2 as a four. We always use concentrated sulfuric acid when it's going to be formation of ester and something like that. But when it comes to this, okay, it's dilute sulfuric acid. And I am going to get NaH as a four plus HCN. So this HCN is prepared in C2. Okay, once I get this. HCN, I'm going to react that, okay, in this example, they react with propanol. Do remember, they can react with propanon, okay, they can react with propanon. So both, okay, some students will say, sir, is it only reaction with aldehyde? No, both, okay, both aldehyde and ketone, they can react with HCN. But one important thing that you need to note is going to be this part is additional. I put it over there. But before we go into that part, okay, you just look at the reaction that is happening. Why this mechanism is called nucleophilic addition? Okay, please remember last time when I taught you carbon carbon double bond electrophilic addition. Carbon carbon single bond. Then uh, when you react with a uh, let's say halogen under the presence of uh, sunlight, then it's free radical substitution. Then we learn about halogen alkane and alcohol. That is NS, nucleophilic substitution, when we learn about SN1, SN2, and so on. That, but now it's going to be known as nucleophilic addition. When you put them as nucleophilic addition, it's divided into two. One, it's related to nucleophile. Why it is related to nucleophile? Because oxygen is more electronegative. They will change into delta negative over here, delta positive. So something is attacking the delta positive of the carbon. So what attacks them? Nucleophile. So that's why it's nucleophilic. For substitution, we substitute. But here, if you look at what is happening, the O, the H will come here. It is not substituting, it is being added. The CN is coming over here and being added as something new. So that is why it's not substituted, uh, substitution, it's adding, okay, it's adding. So this is going to be nucleophilic addition reaction. And then the product is always known as 2-hydroxybutane nitrile. Why? Because nitrile, this is automatically carbon number one. And then this is going to be carbon number two. And then the alcohol is at always at carbon number two. Okay, that's why they call it as 2-hydroxybutane nitrile. Do we need to know how to name the full molecule? No need. Any molecule, you name it 2-hydroxybutane nitrile. Yeah. Now, once you get this CN, okay, doesn't matter whether they have OH and so on. Okay, I want to teach you related to RCN. Anything that ends with CN, they are known as nitrile. 
And nitrile under your syllabus will undergo two reactions. And I have taught you under carboxylic acid. And I want you to remember this again. Yeah, When you have nitrile, okay, when you use dilute hydrochloric acid, dilute, yeah, okay, and you reflux them, it will change into okay, RCOOH and then the remaining, this NH4, okay, uh, plus, they will give you this ion. We have learned about this. And you need to also know, okay, when you have RCN, okay, like for example, if I have CH3 and then CN, okay, I can reduce them. Now, when under reduction for nitrile, we are going to use a different reducing agent. We are not going to use NABH4, we are not going to use LIALH4. For nitrile, we use sodium in ethanol, okay, sodium in ethanol, okay, they will have reduction. So similar, just put H over there, okay, bracket. So what will happen is the hydrogen, okay, because you see CN, if I redraw the CN, it will look like carbon triple bond N. So what happens to the CN, okay, the carbon, the CH3, okay, the carbon, okay, the bond will change into single bond to CN. And then you are going to form new bonds this bond and then each nitrogen must have three bonds so there's another two bonds being formed so what do we put over there we put hydrogen we put hydrogen we put hydrogen we put hydrogen how many hydrogen we put one two three four so four so four so what do we get we are going to get something that ends with nh2 this is called amine okay amine so we have learned about that, okay? So do we, uh, why we are learning it over here? Same, if I have this two hydroxybutane nitrile, when I react with dilute hydrochloric acid, what will I get? I might get R, C, OH stays there, H stay there, I will get COOH over here. What will happen if I reduce them? Okay, using this Na ethanol, okay, depending on the situation, okay, if let's say I'm just going to have the OH over there, I might get COH, okay, and then I might get the H over here, CH2, then NH2, okay, depends on how they want to formulate the question, okay, so the OH will stay, okay, sometimes the OH will be also being oxidized, or reduce, okay, you just need to adjust accordingly, okay, but I'll just move on, yeah, so you need to know, okay, once you know that, okay, we need to know about the mechanism of the reaction, very simple, okay, any reaction, whether it's going to be aldehyde or ketone, first reaction is going to be, you are going to have, okay, oxygen is more electronegative, so delta negative, delta positive, and then you have the cyanide ion over there, the nucleophile, now, where this nucleophile is coming from, do remember just now I put NaCN and H2SO4, okay, to become NaHSO4, okay, plus HCN. Now, do take note HCN, okay, unlike KCN in your halogen alkane, they will change into K plus and CN minus easily. But HCN is not like that. They do not change easily. Please take note. Okay, they are like some uh, something like HCl, okay, covalently bonded, they don't want to change. So there's going to be some kind of reversible reaction. But, okay, the NaCN over here, okay, the NaCN that we put initially, they can break like KCN, they can break. So initially, the CN that is coming over there, maybe is coming some from here, some, most of it is coming from here. So to start the reaction, okay, to start the reaction. So once it comes over there, you are going to get an intermediate, okay? Intermediate, you see the CN, and then there is going to be the negative uh, charge over there. And do remember the oxygen has lone pair of electron. This intermediate itself is actually a nucleophile. Why? What is the definition of nucleophile? It's a species that has lone pair of electron. So this is a nucleophile, okay? What is going to happen next? the intermediate or the nucleophile itself will now, okay, 
uh, depends on how you want to see it. Okay, we know that CN is more, uh, uh, if you want to put it uh, like carbon and hydrogen, they are almost same electronegativity. So what happens when you have a lot of electron here? So when they come, uh, ACN come closer, okay, the electron will move towards this side. Okay, making this delta negative, this is delta positive. But now the electron will start to come to H. And this will uh, facilitate or this will uh, make the reaction, okay, the whole uh, heterolytic, uh, heterolytic fission will be happening. Okay, so do, uh, you can see there's a lot of terms that I'm using, homolytic fission last time, but now heterolytic fission. So when heterolytic fission is happening, you see the OH is joined, this CN is already there. So of course, the, uh, because it's heterolytic, so they will form another nucleophile. Okay, so CN nucleophile will be there. So don't just simply write CN, okay? This is very important. It must be written in this form. Very, very important. They have asked this in exams before, okay? You must put the dot, dot, and minus, okay? Because heterolytic fission is taking place. So whatever it is, you are going to get this 2-hydroxy nitrum. Okay, so now, okay, if let's say we want to put uh, in form of checkpoint, okay, so let's say name the organic product, okay, that will be formed, okay, from nucleophilic addition of ACN to ethanol to propanol. Okay, let's see, ethanol, this is going to be ethanol, CH3, okay, so what will happen, okay, you are going to get CH3 here, and then, this is going to be OH here. The H will stay. And then I will have CN over there. Or you can put this CN to the side. And then you put the H over there. So how do I name this? Okay. This is carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three. Sorry. I think I shouldn't name it that way. It's nitrile. So carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three. So it's going to be propane. Okay, you write down propane. Okay, and then this is going to be propane nitrile. This is going to be hydroxy at position number two, two hydroxy propane nitrile. Okay, if you want to name it this way. Yeah. And if it is going to be propanon, okay, you should understand. Okay, you should by now you should you can predict. You can see from ethanol is changing propane. If it is propanon, because there is an increase in number of carbon, you're supposed to get something to do with butane. Okay, so uh, two hydroxy butane nitrile. Okay, if you are not sure, okay, you can draw one, two, three. Okay, propanon. So what will happen? Okay, the the OH will come here. Okay, the and then CN will come here. So the longest carbon chain, I think uh, not uh, butan, okay, because I think there is a CH3 there. So the longest carbon chain, this is the longest carbon chain, okay, which is going to be propane. So propane nitrile. Position number one, position number two has methyl group and hydroxy group. So you put two, two, hydroxy, methyl, propane nitro okay so this one you can uh, name it yeah so make sure okay you know how to name it okay and then drawing curly arrow diagram for all this okay maybe i can show you for the propanon okay so propanon okay first what will happen okay if you have this okay first you put this arrow go there delta negative delta positive then you have CN, so they come over here, and they will form an intermediate, okay, so O dot dot minus CH3, CH3, and then you have CN. Next step, okay, is going to be, you are going to have, okay, when they approach HCN. So what will happen, the negative charge, okay, will make this one go there, this is delta negative, delta positive over here. So this one will come towards the delta positive, forming CH3, COH, CH3, CN, 
plus cn dot dot minus. Okay, I hope you can follow what I thought you were with it. Okay, that's the mechanism. Okay, the next one. Okay, let's go. Okay, uh, testing and uh, for aldehyde and ketone. Okay, now so we already know. Okay, uh, let uh, let us recall what we have learned until now. Okay, I have taught you about preparing aldehyde and ketone. I have taught you about reduction. If you have oxidation, you will have reduction. Okay. And I have taught you the only reaction. Okay, I think if you count reduction, yeah, then there are two reactions involving carbonyl compound. Okay, the another one is going to be with HCN and it will be done in C2, not KCN. Please remember that. HCN in C2, how do you prepare? With NACN with dilute H2SO4. Okay, and you will get two hydroxy nitron. Okay, and how to write equations, how to use the uh, curly arrow diagram for nucleophilic addition, you need to know, okay? Now, next is going to be testing with 2,4 DNPH. Do remember this testing is for both, okay? You are testing for 2,4 DNPH for aldehyde and ketone. So in order to know this, you need to know, you need to memorize this uh, substance, the 2,4 DNPH, okay? So maybe if you want to remember this one, if this is number two, then three, this is four. That's why two, four. Okay, and then this part, okay, after the number four, they will have NH. This one is not H. Normally, we say NH2, but here is going to be another NH2. So you need to know, okay, how to replicate them again. So I'll just show you again. Okay, you can start. Okay, maybe you draw this. Okay, DNPH, yeah. So 2, 4. Assume I'm going to take this as 2, 4. Okay, NO2. This is 2, 3, 4. So NO2 here. And then N, one of it is H, another one you put N, H, and H. This is 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine. And let's say I want to react with any of my uh, carbonyl compound. Okay, let's say I'm going to react with something like this. It's quite easy. Okay, how they will react, okay, the hydrogen, both hydrogen from this NH2, okay, they will react with the O to give you water. And they will give you something like this. Okay, I'll just draw the molecule again. They will give you NO2 here, N, H, and there is double bond. I put double bond over there. And then C, and then CH3, CH3. So this one, okay, it's called... Uh, if the previous one is called 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine, do remember in your uh, exam, okay, you can use okay, the short form, DNPH. Okay, no need to remember. Normally, they don't ask you to name this, okay, but it is 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazone. Ends with zone. Okay, that is zine becomes zone. Okay, so this is going to be if some of you want to memorize this. Okay, but whatever it is, okay, if this is going to happen, okay, you are going to have, okay, this one, which is going to be a deep orange precipitate. Now, this deep orange precipitate, do remember, you do not need to heat. It will happen immediately. Okay, you keep it for a while. Okay, it will become like that. So do not, you do not need to hit them. Okay, very important. Okay, no need to hit. Okay, now, how about carboxylic acid and ester? Oh, they have also C double bond O. Okay, do they give you uh, the deep orange precipitate? The answer is no. This 2,4 DNPH is only for aldehyde and only for ketone. I'll repeat again. 2,4 DNPH is only for aldehyde and only for ketone. Do not go and say that there is a double bond, carbon double bond O, and they will give you a positive reaction. The answer is no. Why? You do not need to know, okay? But for some of you who are curious, I can tell you, they will react, but they are not going to give you a stable product until they will maintain the precipitate. So they will not give you the precipitate. The only thing that will give you the precipitate with 2,4 DNPH is going to be aldehyde and ketone. Okay, that's why they can be also used to identify uh, ketone and aldehyde. Now, apart from this, uh, normally, okay, we learn about oxidizing agent. 
Okay, we learn about potassium, uh, potassium manganate, potassium dichromate. They are very popular. Why they are popular? Because they are very good oxidizing agent. But in chemistry, we do have okay some of the unpopular oxidizing agent because they are very, uh, they are mild oxidizing agent. They are not so good. Okay, so uh, example is Tolens region and failing solution so tolens region memorize tolen is something related to silver mirror okay silver mirror failing is something related to uh, this one brick red precipitate brick red ppt okay but one thing that you need to remember okay since just now i wrote it very big do not hit okay this one must be warm okay in a water bath solution this one also must be warm Okay, if you want to see the result, you must warm them. Okay, this one is not written clearly in your textbook. So please write it down somewhere. Okay, uh, Tolens region, you need to warm. What do we have in Tolens region? If you have a mirror, it means we are talking about silver. So if you are talking about silver, means it is silver ion, silver nitrate ion uh, with the presence of excess ammonia. Okay, and what happens? It is going to oxidize. Now, since we are talking about oxidation, we know that primary alcohol will oxidize to become aldehyde. Aldehyde can be oxidized to become carboxylic acid. I know secondary alcohol will be oxidized to ketone, but ketone cannot be oxidized further. So, if you are using any oxidizing agent in this chapter, only you can only oxidize aldehyde. Ketone cannot be oxidized. So, pollen, okay, the positive reaction is only for aldehyde failing the positive reaction is only for aldehyde you need to remember this okay ketone will give you a negative reaction there won't be any precipitate they will stay as it is okay they will stay as it is okay so this is going to be something that you must know okay you must know now uh this one okay if you want to memorize carboxylate i all, all this it's not so important okay but what you need to know is it's an oxidizing agent. It means they are going to oxidize others, but at the same time, they will get reduced. So Ag+, plus, they will become Ag from positive one to become zero oxidation number. You can see reduction in oxidation number. Therefore, okay, this one, okay, this one is going to be plus electron if you want to fill up everything. Therefore, that's the reason we have the silver mirror being formed. Okay, that's the reason. And if you look at, okay, failing, failing is copper 2 plus ion. Same oxidizing agent, they will oxidize aldehyde, okay, but at the same time, they get uh, reduced. They will reduce into copper plus, from plus 2 to become plus 1, okay? So they are going to be reduced. And this copper plus, okay, they will join with O2 minus to form Cu2O. This one is called copper 1 oxide. Okay, copper one oxide. Copper one oxide is the one that is responsible to give you this red orange precipitate or commonly known as brick red precipitate. Okay, in your passive papers, they always use this brick red precipitate. So they didn't say, uh, they mentioned here warm. Okay, so you remember I already put, okay, you need to warm them, but this happens only for aldehyde. Now, this is, very very special okay triiodomethane reaction does not apply to all okay but very special why because it's a test it's a specific test when it comes to carbonyl compound if you have a carbonyl compound with ch3 then you can have a triiodomethane reaction does it only for carbonyl compound the answer is no you can also test okay with alcohol that has CH3, okay? And then, of course, alcohol, they must be having another hydrogen. So whatever R group over there, whatever R group over there, doesn't matter, okay? Uh, this one, generally, if you put R, okay, we are thinking about all ketone that has methyl group attached to it. How about aldehyde? There is only one aldehyde that can uh, undergo triiodomethane reaction, which is when R is H. Okay, so it means the aldehyde, only if this is H, then only they will form aldehyde, right? So if it is going to be like this, then two carbons, so we are talking about ethanol. So you see, 
Etanol is the only aldehyde that will give you a positive triiodomethane reaction, or you can have methyl ketones and some other alcohol that has this uh, structure. So what do we have? Okay, again, you need to warm them. So I'll just put warm. Okay, what do we have? It's an alkaline solution with iodine. It means it has NaOH and I2. Okay, it has NaOH and I2. And how do we see the precipitate is going to be some kind of yellow crystalline precipitate. Okay, so you will get something like that. But how does it work? Okay, let's actually look at uh, how does it work. So this is one example okay, of, a, of a compound, C2H5, okay, a ketone, okay, that can give you a positive reaction with triiodomethane reaction. Now, Michael can. Now, what is triiodomethane? This is methane. If I put one Cl over there, this is known as chloromethane. Okay. Similar, if this is methane, if I put one iodine over there, this is called iodomethane. So if I have triiodomethane, what does it mean? It means C, there is going to be I, 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 and H. This is triiodomethane. Okay, so I'll erase this first, okay. It is going to be the formation of triiodomethane. In order to get that, you must have the CH3. But I'll show you what actually happens, okay. When you have NaOH and I2, okay. The first thing is, there is going to be a substitution reaction, okay. The I will substitute all the hydrogen here, okay. So what you will have is going to be C2, I'll just put over here, C2H5 then C double bond O, C, all these will be substituted by I. This is the first thing that will happen. Second, the sodium hydroxide will make the bond to be broken. Okay, it will be like an oxidate, uh, it is hydrolysis. So when the bond is broken, you are going to get carbon double bond O, C2H5, okay? And here, what will happen? The O will join here, O, and A. The hydrogen from the sodium hydroxide, they will join with the Ci3 just now to give you triiodomethane. And this is the one that is responsible to give you the yellow crystalline precipitate. So you are forming a salt over there. Okay, this is something that you need to memorize how to get it done, how to write equations and so on. Okay, but it can be only achieved if you have the CH3 over there. Okay, very important. So they didn't show you for alcohol, okay, they are related to alcohol. Okay, but the same thing, okay, you should be able to replicate for alcohol as well. Okay, so I'll just move on. Okay, so now, okay, we go into this infrared spectroscopy. Now, for infrared spectroscopy, I think most of you can do it, okay? I think uh, the way that I teach will be different than uh, what uh, the other teachers actually thought. So maybe now, this one, Jackson, maybe uh, there is a video, okay, that I actually made about this infrared spectroscopy. The way I teach is very simple. Even now, I will not be using a lot of time, okay, for this. Because why? Okay, what you need to remember, this is going to be from the data booklet, yeah? This is uh, the information that I took from the data booklet, okay? Those information are there. When we compare, when we give answer, we will refer to that values, okay? We need to put all these values, okay? But what is general thing that you need to do? Under absorbances, okay, we have different characteristics, different intensity, and we need to ignore this region. No need to see 800 to 1,400. So if you look at every example that I put, I put a big, red box to cover 800 to 1400. I don't need them. Okay, they are called as fingerprint region. I do not need to look at them. Okay, now second thing that I need to look is I need to look at three numbers. Okay, even some of you would have forgotten. Yeah, three numbers. 3400, 3000 and 1750. Must remember. Three numbers, 3,400, 3,000, and 1,750. Now, if you use the number over there, this is going to be 
Okay, 3,400. 3,000. 3,000. 1,750. 3,000. 1,750. Okay. Now, another thing that I need you to remember is going to be the shape. Okay. If you have a shape, okay, where something like this, okay, this one I like to call as, okay, if you select this and I rotate, it looks like a ghost, okay, that is shape, uh, showing a peace sign. If you have this shape, okay, this belongs to alcohol. Okay, this belongs to alcohol. We have another two shape, which is going to be something related uh, like this. Okay, some of you actually memorize vampire fangs or something like that. Up to you how you want to memorize, but this belongs to Esther. And if you have something like this, this belongs to carboxylic acid. So what I need to remember over here, okay? What I need to remember over here. The only thing that I want you to remember is the numbers, okay? Like see, see here, this is automatically alcohol. So ghost saying the peace sign. Alcohol, 3,400, 3,000. Don't have 1,750. When it comes to carboxylic acid, you see 3,000. Okay, 3,000 and 1,750. And here, 3,000 and 1,750. So in summary, how? If I have Esther, okay, 3,000, 1,750. Must know. Okay, must know. So if I have carboxylic acid, something like this, come down. So similar like just now, 3,000. 1,750. So if I have the ghost with the peace sign, that is going to be 3,400 and 3,000. Don't have 1,750. Okay. This is what I want you to memorize. Okay. So if you do that, okay, you won't have any problem to answer the question. Okay. This one, you can just quickly memorize. Yeah. So here, okay, we have some past year paper questions and so on. Okay, I will not go through everything. Okay, you can go through on your own. Okay, but you see this one, there is going to be aldehyde. Okay, aldehyde, you are changing them into alcohol. Okay, so if you want to change aldehyde to become alcohol, you need to oxidize them, uh, reduce them, sorry. You need to reduce them. So this is oxidizing agent. Uh, this is also an uh, oxidizing agent. So the only thing that I can see here is sodium borohydrate. Uh, so this is NaBH4. And what are the conditions you must know by now? Yeah, so it's room temperature alkaline. So that's why the answer is boy, quite easy. Okay, the answer is all given there. Okay, you can just check. Okay, number, uh, the next one. 3 methyl butanone is treated with alkaline aqueous iodine. Okay, let's draw, okay. Putanon, it means the double bond must be here or it can be over here. Some students, they actually think, why it must be there, okay? Doesn't matter, okay? Doesn't matter. If you want to put it over here, it's still butan two on, uh, butanon, okay, butanon. And then automatically when you put there, automatically this is carbon number one, carbon number two. This is carbon number three, so CH3. Okay, I put over there. Now, next. What I need to do is some common mistakes will be you look at different or the wrong CH3 when you want to react with the triiodomethane. The triiodomethane, do remember, they will react okay, with the CH3 next to carbon double bond O. Okay, so this CH3. So some students, they actually take the wrong CH3 and then uh, don't, uh, couldn't get the answer. So you, you see here, okay. Not this CH3, you take this CH3, okay? So I take this CH3. So what actually happens here is this CH3 will become CI3, okay? Like what we did just now, yeah? Please remember. And then using the sodium hydroxide, this bond is going to be broken. I am going to get this molecule, 
and then I will have O minus and A plus, and this one will become CHI3. That will give me the uh, uh, the precipitate, okay? The deep or uh, this one is going to be yellow crystalline precipitate, okay? I will get this, okay? But they say the mixture is then acidified. Now, if you acidify this, okay, it's like you are adding ACL. So what will happen? This NA will form an ACL. So what will happen here? The H will come here. So I am going to get a carboxylic acid. So how do I name this carboxylic acid? This is carbon number one. This is carbon number two. This is straight carbon. It's going to be propanoic acid. So two methyl propanoic acid. I do not need to even put two there because it's methyl cannot come somewhere else. Okay. So it's going to be uh, methyl propanoic acid. Okay. So you can see here, okay, methyl propanoic acid. That will be the answer. Okay, so you can get all this. Okay, 